Terminator 1, 9 out of 10. Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort Logan Dakari. Um, if you enjoy this review or any of our other usual content that we have on the channel, subscribe, like, share with your friends, join the madness, you know the drill. <laughs> so, um, what movie did we watch today? We watched the fourth in the Terminator series, Terminator uh, Salvation. Oh boy, yeah, this is the first non-numbered sequel. Yes, it is. This is a film that... It's very interesting for me. The budget of this film was $200 million, and the box office was $371.4 million. So it didn't make quite a bit of money back. Critics rate this film a 3.3 out of 10, and audience rate this film a 5.3 out of 10. I'm guessing that's what that is. I'll do a double check on while I'm editing. Um, so, true ratings will be right here. Yes. Uh, so the synopsis of this film, pretty much, I didn't have to look it up, it's pretty self-explanatory. Set during the future war, John Connor battles through the army of machines and also trying to prove his leadership. A lone survivor known as Marcus tries to figure out what, what has happened to him and what the fuck's going on around him. That is pretty much the movie synopsis right there. <laughs> and, we, and we made the joke during the movie that it, uh, another title for this movie could be Marcus Wright's Bad Day. His really bad day. No science, no, no science time, no arsenal due to being... I'm too tired to talk about that. <laughs> I'm going to share my comments first before I get into my pros and cons. Okay. Um, so my first comment, uh, this was during the time where Sam Worthington was Hollywood's flavor of the month. They rotate through actors like this, and you realize that you don't really see him in that many movies anymore. Um, Which is a shame because he's a good actor. He's a good actor. I just feel like he gets him put in really bad like like roles or just bad like writing or whatever. He just gets in bad situations. I do want to mention that uh, either it was lightly touched upon or it just wasn't mentioned at all. But I don't recall. Um, them saying ever in the franchise about uh, people signing their bodies off to Cyberdyne and Skynet or whatever. Was Cyberdyne mentioned in T3 at all? Um, they mentioned that they freaking got the rights to the AI system from it, but that's okay. it. Okay, so I don't remember hearing that at all. So Cyberdyne being a solid company uh, back before the uh, uh, Judgment Day is kind of up in the air, honestly. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I remember right, when Marcus was doing the, uh, the pretty much the complete upload, uh, it said it was bought out by the U.S. Department of Defense. Yeah. This is kind of a joke comment. Um, did the nuke reset Mark, uh, resurrect Marcus? I don't know. <laughs> His body was down there. When the nuke went off, he just comes crawling out of the mud just like, Arr! like he's Tarzan or something. Or My guess oh, is uh, they had him in some kind of stasis pod and the shockwave or the damage deactivated it. And that's how just, he woke up? He was just on a gurney. I don't know. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. As we know very well, and a lot of other people know, um, there was a major uh, breakout during the filming of this movie. Uh, Christian Bale almost walked out on the project because he got pissed off with somebody. Yeah, a sound tech walked onto his shot. Yeah, um, I don't know too much. I think I heard that he's kind of a perfectionist a little <coughs> bit. Um, but I also kind of want to throw in there that not to only mention that he might be kind of a perfectionist, but since this was done, the filming for this was done right after The Dark Knight, I kind of want to say that his mental health and like some of his acting was affected by Ledger's death because that affected a lot of people. I never did think about that. Because, like, I mean, not thinking about that because, like, like, people were like, oh, yeah, do a, Christian Bell's a horrible John Connor and everything. I'm like, well, if you think about it, they, the filming for films are, like, a year before they actually come out. And... Even if that was, like, six months to a year, like, Heath Ledger, like, hit a lot of people really hard. Especially a lot of people on the Dark Knight Project, so... Yeah, so that would have still been... Christian fresh. Bale may have been still kind of fucked up. By yeah, that. that still would have been fresh in his mind. That's just a, a theory I have. I don't want to say that completely ties into the whole uh, breakdown uh, incident, 
but it could have had a, a, a hand in it. <laughs> my last two commas are actually fun facts. Um, this film actually reintroduced uh, my love to the song Rooster by Alice in Chains. This is one of the movies that inspired my writing when I was in high school. Along with The Dark Knight and a couple other films. Okay, now to get through my uh, pros and cons. And I think some of my cons are kind of like, eh, too. Um, though not the typical soundtrack like we usually get, it's very interesting. And I like the fact that Danny Elfman did it. I liked the soundtrack for what it was. Also a pro in this film that I thought I actually was happy about was that this is the first and only film set in the goddamn future war. Well, you get some scenes in... Oh, God, fucking Genesis. I am not looking for... I am not looking forward to Genesis. I'll, I'm gonna say that right now. But this is actually set, like, full length all the way through start to finish in the future war. This is what the fans wanted. Some didn't like it, but we'll get into the ratings, but I am happy that this was set in the future war. That could be a con for some people, though. But, I'm happy it was. My last two pros are kind of tied together. Um, new Terminator models introduced in the film. I actually was like... I liked about that. And, uh... Terminator pods, the bike, the, the Terminator bikes. I really liked those for some reason. <laughs> Number one negative. I wrote it down before the movie even started. The promotions for this film ruined the movie. A hundred and ten percent ruined the movie. I would say it did because it was just the trailer alone just destroyed the whole plotline of the film and just. Why would you? It revealed too much. Yeah, I mean, and as. As I mentioned while we're watching the movie, you can fix that trailer by having that whole freaking really awesome John Connor speech of "We've been at war since either of us both have existed." Just do a blackout screen. Yeah, all you gotta do is you just focus on C John Connor and you do not show Marcus. Yeah, I would say they should have left Marcus out the entire the, the entire trailer. That would have been like, oh, who the fuck's mm, this guy? I don't think you can do that, but you know, kind of, kind of, you know, pull the wolves over people's the wolf over people's eyes like he's. Like, he's just another human. I kind of wish they would have went in more depth in, uh, on Marcus's origin and everything, because I feel like they kind of rushed it in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, why was he on death row? Who did he kill? Uh, he said, like, his two cops were dead and his brother were dead because of him or something like that. And that oh. was just, like, one line. I was like, I mean, that would have been, been a great fucking ten-minute intro to a movie. <laughs> now, if this had been a trilogy like it would have been intended, do you think they would have showed that in the beginning? Kind of do, like, do, like, a long, cold open? I mean... I would say like I would say at least twenty minutes, and then kind of like go into the whole prison cell thing after that. I wouldn't want that to be like the entire movie. But well, yeah, I'm not saying that either. Expand on it. The Batman voice. That's a lot of people's negative complaints about that, and I know that it could also tie into the character with you saying that him hey, inhaling all the all the dust and the chemicals and the and the dirt in the air and whatnot. But and, people and knew he just got done with Batman. And even more than that, you. Know, Soldiers have seen combat. They speak like that. I mean, you talk to a drill sergeant; they get that low, gruff tone. Yeah, because you because you can still be heard, but your voice doesn't carry as far unless you project it. So it's kind of a freaking uh, thing, like where you can still communicate and be heard, but not be heard way out there. Green screen effect was obvious at times; like it wasn't glaring, but I could tell. CGI wasn't all that bad. Uh, not all of Arnold's CGI, but there were bits of Arnold's CGI that looked fucking horrific. <laughs> like that head turned up. Yeah, your eyes are shiny as fuck. Well, it was on par with PS3 graphics and not PS2. Identity Crisis. This film, this film, I feel like this film doesn't know what it wants to be sometimes. Because, it's like, oh, we're in a Terminator film. And then we get into them talking to, like, survivors and settlers and everything. It's like, so we're getting into Fallout now? And then we get to the giant chase scene with the goddamn rigged up fucking Mad Max looking semi truck. And I'm like, now we're in fucking Mad Max. And then we get back to Terminator. And I'm like, what? What, what are we doing? It's all, they're all post apocalyptic. <laughs> I didn't realize it until now, but it just felt like this film had a really bad identity crisis when it came to that. This is not really like a super negative, but I thought uh, Marcus Hopscotch was funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, you buzzed up laughing when he hit the water. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the C okay, that was another scene where the CGI didn't look that great, but I just thought it was hilarious to see him going... Bah! Okay, and, I, and you know, having, you know, hit water like that, but not at that speed, that's actually realistic, because if you don't know water is non-compressible, you hit it at a certain speed, it is exactly like hitting concrete. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. This is one of the two Terminator films where it gets another glaring negative. 
uh, almost as bad as the the promote the the, the uh, trailers for this film, the promotion of this movie. The rating of this film does not need to be PG thirteen. At least the original version. PG thirteen, I feel like hurt this film a lot. Yeah, it got in more audiences and more like, younger ages and everything, but it hurt the franchise quite a bit. So first, it feels like this film is rushed compared to the other films. And also to tie in with it is like this movie feels like it's missing a lot of important information that should have been said in the film that I feel like if I remember right were either explained in books or in video games because there's a lot of stuff about this movie that I actually know about that is not in this movie <laughs> and it makes me kind of angry that it's not in the film like it, I feel like those elements that were either taken out or put in like other content would have fleshed the story out so much more would have made it have a better runtime. And I feel like it would have been more like a, a flowing river and not like the you're flowing down a river on a canoe and you keep hitting rocks. This film could have been great if they didn't fuck up the writing, if they didn't rush things, if they didn't cut out scenes that I feel like would have fleshed out either, scene, either elements of the story or important stuff that would have explained things a whole lot better instead of just going, oh, here you go. Yeah, again, because we we had we had the same complaint about Terminator Three. It doesn't have that uh, freaking uh, James Cameron polish. And do you remember like um, actually ever like hearing about like um, like scenes or like important information about this film that actually ties into this movie? But then when you go back and watch it, you're just like, where the fuck is it? <laughs> because I've played uh, the old because um, Terminator Salvation had like a, a video game with the same name. The video game is not that great. Like it's not good. Well, the, the only term, the only Terminator game I played was Terminator versus RoboCop <laughs> on I think NES. I know there's a comic that parodies the same thing, so I think those tie into each other. Yeah, it does. And I feel like there's like a, a book novelization of this movie because I have a book novelization of Spider-Man Three, and there's a lot of stuff in that book that is out of Spider-Man Three, and I think that's the same thing that may have happened with this film. Can I get off? Can I get off topic and still have it be on camera? Yes. Uh, remember, I was uh, going to tra tra uh, track you down a book for your birthday, the novelization of Friday the Thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Wonder why I didn't get it. Expensive. Yeah, the like the shittiest used copy on eBay that I found was two thousand dollars. So that's pretty much my thoughts in the whole film it's just like there's some good things about it there's some bad things about it there's some stuff that I'm just kind of like what did would this would this make sense would that make sense why is this happening like this film is like what could have been I mean I do not disagree there is a lot that this movie can could be and you know as I said in the last review two minute three is a setup movie and I'll give it that. It is a good setup movie. We could have got better. Is there anything that you want to bounce off my thoughts that kind of tie in with yours? Is there anything that yeah. I missed and everything? I specifically want to talk about John Connor in this movie. You want to talk about John Connor? You know, one thing I loved about this movie, you know, seeing it in theaters, because I, the only Terminator film I didn't see in theaters on release, I did see it later on at a uh, private screening event, I think it was a Fathom event at AMC mm -hmm. uh, where they did like a re, re showing of it. I really like seeing John Connor as a soldier, mm -hmm. as a leader. You know, in Terminator, in Terminator Three, he's this guy running away from away from his uh, fate. Then at the end of that movie, he embraces it, and then you go from whiny little bitch John Connor to. I do not want to fuck with this guy, this guy John Connor, and that's one of the reasons why I say Christian Bale is perfectly cast. I think the complaint about Christian Bale is like number one, the uh, voice, the, the, the voice, what happened during the filming of it, and I want to say like a lot of it, I don't, a lot of it is probably not Christian Bale. It's just the, the writing, like the script he was given, because it, it, his. I want to say his soldier character seems very generic, but it's because of whoever wrote his dialogue and stuff. They do, dude. How many soldiers have you met? They're all generic. I know, but John Connor's not supposed to be like generic. He's supposed to be very dynamic. He's John fucking Connor. Well, compared to the other soldiers in the Resistance, he is very dynamic. Ah, uh, yeah, true. I mean, because he's a techie nerd who knows how to shoot. Yeah, but how many people spouting those opinions watched the movie once and didn't 
then never watch it again. Because you, because you said it changed your it changed your yeah, opinion on it. Because the last time I saw this film, I was sixteen or seventeen. Because I think I was still in high school when I watched this film. Because I had it on DVD for a while, and then I sold it because I didn't like it. And I watched a review of uh, another YouTuber. Uh, his name's Cody Leach. I'll shout out to you, I guess. <laughs> um, Link right here. He okay. He's the guy that actually made me want to go back and watch Terminator Salvation and. He had said that this is a film for him. He said originally he did not like this film. He absolutely hated it. But going back and watching it again several years later, he grew a better appreciation of it, and he actually enjoys it more than what it is. He still has says there's things not wrong with it, but he doesn't absolutely fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. So it kind of made me go, maybe the same thing will happen to me, and pretty much same thing happened. <laughs> And it made me realize that this movie has the best fucking character of all of the Terminator series. Better than Kyle Reese. Better than John Connor. Better than Schwarzenegger. It's goddamn Marcus. He has the best character in the entire series. And if you ignore the choppiness and the bad writing, he has probably the best character development out of all of the whole, the whole franchise. If you were to give... The writing, either James Cameron or some other legendary fucking director who knew what they were doing and was following the Terminator code, I feel like Marcus would have changed the game on Terminator. I think I, I think I just thought of a way to fix the, uh, a lot of people's problems with the movie. Hmm. Cast uh, Sam Worthington as freaking uh, John Connor. I mean, it could have worked, but I think for like the role of being like the Terminator or the human cyborg and everything, and the fact that. Because at first I was like, okay, I feel like his character development's not that great. Because at first you're just like, oh, he's just a guy on death row. He's just being kind of a dickhead and whatnot. And he's kind of just being like blunt towards um. Not and, to mention a cold-blooded killer. Yeah, being a, being a dick towards Anton Yel Yelkin's character, um, Kyle oh, Reese. Oh, dude, how good was he in this? I actually liked his role. In, oh, in man. It was, it, was, it was pretty decent. Yeah, and I, I, and I gotta, I, I gotta say, he was perfectly cast as well. He's got the look. I mean... You age him up 20 years, and you've got Michael Bean. For Michael Bean from the 80s. <laughs> yes. Going back to Marcus and everything, like, because I, I actually put this down as a negative, saying that uh, uh, I felt like Anton and Sam's, like, chemistry wasn't really working. It wasn't clicking, because I felt like it was off. And then I sat there, and I was watching, and I was thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? Marcus turns Marcus starts out as a, as a dick. Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't care what happens to him. And at the same time, I'm also thinking, well, if he kind of, since he is... Spoiler alert, a cyborg. Uh, he has the elements of a machine, too, so he kind of has, like, that, like, dead straight, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, I have one goal, I have no emotion kind of feeling that ties in together. That's kind of a really shitty way to explain it, but it's just, like, his... He goes from what he is then to, like, actually what he is now, and he, he, he looks the part, he sounds the part, he... Fits the part. It's just the writing. Yeah, that's the thing about doing cyborg characters in the Terminator universe. They've got to be big guys. Uh, the alternate ending. Which one? Because I think there's two. The one that I know of is basically what happens is uh, John Connor gets stabbed by the T-800. Mm -hmm. uh, Marcus gets up and he kills the T-800 and John Connor ends up dying. Yeah. So yeah, what? that's where that's where they're the same. But then, like, what happens after is where it differs. I think I've heard both of them, but the one that I actually enjoyed was actually him. Uh, uh, like, John Connor dies on the table and everything, and Marcus ends up slowly taking control of the resistance and, and becoming that prophet. Since yeah, and everything. And then there's the other alternate ending where after the heart surgery, he just gets up and kills everybody. <sighs> I feel like that one would have not gone well. But, you know, that one, I'm not sure if it's true or not. That just might be, like, something out of fortune. Oh, no, like, I actually looked it up, and both, like, like that, both of those were actually, like, uh, on the, I, think, I don't know if they were shot or filmed, but I know that it was on the, it was in the, in the script at some point. But if they did that, and this was going to be guaranteed the last Terminator movie, what a way to end it with that one. <laughs> Kill everyone. Like, I mean, I know it would piss a lot of people off, but, you know, way to be remembered. What do you think the message of this film is? <sighs> it's, um, 
second chance, I guess. Yes, I can see second chances. Or, second chances. Um, self redemption. Because okay, okay, I think that's another thing that people didn't like about this film. They feel like they focused it more about Marcus, and those those are the die hard John Connor. Fans. He he is the main character of this movie. <laughs> yes, and like they they like it needs to be more about John Connor. Yada yada. I'm like this feels like a Marcus movie. That's why it's like it's. Yeah, and I'm and I'm sorry to piss in people's Cheerios. John Connor is not always the main character no. in every movie. Uh-uh. In Terminator 1 and 2, it's about Sarah. If you think about it, John Connor's an auxiliary character. See, the only reason why people are like, complain about it is because they, they say, oh, well, John Connor is, is he's the leader. It's what the lore says and what this says and what that says. If you want to get really fucking honest, you know who the main character of the goddamn series is up until Terminator uh, Salvation? It was Arnold fucking Schwarzenegger. Right. Going back to the first one, it was supposed to be a one-and-done movie. Yeah. But it made so much money that they made one of the best sequels and best movies of all time. Not arguing that, but then they tried to... But, you know, in a perfect world, it's Terminator 1 and 2. And then they just repeat. Ratings. This is where it's going to get very interesting. Solid 8 out of 10. Even with the writing and the bad, like, editing? Even warts and all, 8 out of 10. Warts and all. Like, the casting. All the practical effects. And something you brought up, they were better. Sam Worthington's acting in this. They, they were, the practical effects are better than the CGI in this movie. And, Netflix. and, and the fourth reason I'm give, giving it the rating I am, the so far the only movie that fully takes place in the future war. Yes. Which, uh, as I said before, should have been Terminator 3. For me, it's not a perfect 10, but I, it's... It is not hosh posh garbage like Terminator Three at all. I'm very, very critique critiqueish when it comes to movies, and I nitpick like I like to nitpick like the CGI, the writing, the way it's edited, the way it's put together, the way it's presented, the way you like tease it and everything. It's I'm very picky about that, and there is a lot of things about this film that marked all of those things. But I don't know. It's just I I'm gonna have to go with. I'm gonna have to do a seven and a half. I mean, that's, I feel like that's a little high in my head, but honestly, I thought you were gonna, I thought you were gonna go with so, uh, a seven or a six. If this was like about ten years ago, I would have said like a five because okay, I, so I, like, so the you know kind of not seeing it for a while and kind of reexamining it raised it up that much for you. Yeah, because like I mean, back then I just watched the movie to watch the movie. Right now, now with me doing all these reviews now and 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 have seen. Loads of garbage when it comes to movies. This is not the... Yeah, I've seen a couple of asylum films in my day, too. Not not the, the bottom of the barrel. Like, right. Like, poop-scraping bad movies. This movie is a seven and a half. I, like I said, mainly it's because... For what it gave us, it's pretty decent. And it made me actually enjoy Sam Worthington again as an actor. <laughs> If this was two and a half hours, and they had a better writing team, and they actually fleshed out stuff with characters, especially Marcus, this would have been a 9 out of 10. If they would have done all of that and made a, a better story, I'm pretty sure this is the shortest Terminator film, too. To have an, the original rating being a 5, going up to a 7.5 from like a good 10 year difference, and then saying that if they fixed all the problems that I wanted to get fixed in this film, and then it was perfected, it should have another 2 points, that's... If they went a Star Wars way with it and did the pre-war trilogy and the in the war trilogy, this might have actually been another ten out of ten film for me uh, if they did it right. Yeah, I, I, it, that and I don't know. Like this film, what could have been? It's just it. What, I know what could have been, and I want another war, another Terminator war movie. So yeah, that is our thoughts on Terminator Salvation. So we got two more Terminator films until we get into our ranking series, ranking of this entire series, and probably a trivia, because we like to do trivia when we get done with series. Are, um, we, are we gonna do a, like a round table discussion after we get done with uh, Dark Fate? That's kind of uh, kind of like what we do with that, plus the rankings and everything okay. too. That's a combination of that. Um, I'm still fairly new to this. 
Uh, but until then, this is Mike Check 95. Logan Dakari. And the cat. And Maxi Boy. He's just sniffing here. And we're signing out. And the next time, we're going to be screwing up the timeline again.